So, um, what we wanted to talk to you today is to just give an overview of what we're doing in Staffordshire. Um, I'm going to just give an overview of what we're doing in the council as a whole and then uh, hand over to my colleague Jackie who will talk more about the health. I realise this is more of a health setting but it's just um, <clears throat> useful to set the context. Oh yeah, I could hear the music actually. I thought it must be the drum class downstairs or something. <clears throat> okay, no, it's fine. So um, for us really, the digital um, technology that's um, kind of commonplace now is um, that bit, is it? Oh, yeah. Is I think it's, yeah, it's like organ practice, I think. Um, <clears throat> so for us as an organisation, um, you know, everyone's talking about digital and what does it mean. So for us in Staffordshire, we've set the context of um, what we want to deliver around digital. So for us, primarily, like a lot of other local authorities, it was around citizens and communities. So how do we use digital to enable our citizens? All local authorities are under financial pressures, so the more that we can enable our citizens to access services themselves, the better it is for them because it's more convenient. All of our citizens are consumers, so you know everyone's shopping on Amazon and ASOS. They want to be able to get the council services in the same way. So <clears throat> we've, um, you know, kind of looked across the all of the services that we deliver to see how we can deliver services more gradually, reduce demand, and achieve better results and outcomes for people. And um, you know, new technology can improve the local authority and also support better health and well-being. So that's really into the smart county. Um, we're not a city, and um, you know, as a county, there's a number of challenges in having rural locations. But we still need to deliver health, and make sure that we've got a viable economy, infrastructure, and access to data. So, um, you know, data forms the core of how we deliver services and how we understand how residents want to receive services. Um, another key part of it is about how we enable our workforce, and Jackie will be talking um, some more of that. There's no point having um, services available to residents if we're not going to give those same technology to our staff. <clears throat> it might be something as simplistic as our social workers go out, spend time with um, residents, and then they go back to the desk and type up written notes. So it's just about enabling people to have technology that makes them work more efficiently. Oh. <laughs> so enabling residents. So one of the things, and, and you know, lots of local authorities have got um, apps for um, you know a range of different phones. But for us, we've worked with our district council. So. Staffordshire's two tier, so there's the county, then there's the district councils, and we've also got the police coming on board. So we're trying to make all of the services that we deliver available on the mobile app. We've done quite a lot of uh, work in um, the social care and health forum as well. So we've got things like Staffordshire Cares, we've got online assessments, so you can see if your elderly relative would be. Um, entitled to a health check or whether they need a social care assessment. So what we're trying to do is make people use the online um, stuff available to actually make those decisions themselves rather than it being um, that they ring us and ask for stuff. <clears throat> so there's really an opportunity to change the way that we engage with citizens, put in more of that sort of information. Um, Staffordshire Cares that we did um, a number of years ago, instead of the traditional support that we gave to people, such as uh, someone coming into the home like a carer um, or picking up people and taking them to luncheon clubs. We looked at the community and what they're offering. So there's lots of different voluntary organisations that are already delivering those sorts of services that actually enable people to have independence. You talked about going to bingo on a Wednesday. It might be something completely different. So we've tried to encourage people to find something of interest to them and, and to actually go down that route. The Staffordshire Cares and Purple Pages was an online digital um, directory which allowed people to look for those sort of and brought all of that uh, community support together. <clears throat> so really the key outcomes for us is in increasing customer satisfaction, um, 
reduce unavoidable contact, better demand management and cost reduction. So really, if people are using the services that are available in the community, then it's reducing the financial demand on us as a local authority. <laughs> really not get that. I swipe everything all the time because I've got an iPad. I even swipe, you know, confused. So I'm not quite sure that, why that's not working. Um, so our approach to digital can be described as bimodal. So we've got um, an overarching strategy, but we've got a very tactical approach as well. So rather than it being a strategy that gets lost on a shelf, it was important for us to be able to show and measure how we've made changes. So in order to put the governance structure in, when we've been looking at how we deliver services differently, we've been using um, this design. So typically, when we get to, as a commissioning organisation, you get to the end date of a commissioned um, service, what would happen is you just automatically go into the recommissioning and there might be some look at the cost and how do we deliver that uh, cheap, you know, in a cheaper way. But actually, what we need to understand is the customer journey in all of this and the analytics and insights. So it's not just about reducing the cost, it's actually how do we do this differently? How can we enable all of the parties involved to get better outcomes. So there's things like, you know, value for money, customer satisfaction, productivity, and um, it's an agile sprint. So what we're, we're doing is in a short uh, four week cycle. Traditionally, our kind of uh, redesign process has been very much around the data collection. I know um, a lot of people will be familiar with the Vanguard methodology. It's very much, you know, a lot of data and then it's quite difficult then to, um, to deliver something in a, in a short period of time. So we're trying to work within a more quick time scale on that. <clears throat> and the gateway that just shows how in the organization, when we're looking at doing new projects, this is just about to be launched and it's just um, a, a kind of governance process that stops us from recreating lots of different um, digital solutions. So typically in local authorities, you have siloed budgets, so people go off and procure different things, and before you know it, you've got um, you know, lots of different pieces of technology that we're not making use of or working together on. So this is the kind of governance behind that. Right, so the innovation would be within that cycle. Um, so if we go back, the idea is that the innovation, rather than because as a local authority, we're not um, kind of, um, let me think of uh, an example, we're not Google, so we're not going to come up with something like digital disruption like Uber, but the idea is that you look at what is it, what is it that we're trying the outcome rather than um, what we're trying to, um, it might be something, and uh, Jackie will talk in more detail about it, but it might be a very traditional service. So if I give an example of... Yeah, if I give an example of one of the things we've done, and this is um, something that was tried and you know had some relative success, but we had um, casserole club. So the idea is that the issue is that you have older people who have social isolation, and they may not be getting a regular meal. And the casserole club is a way of registering people who want to cook an extra meal for somebody, and somebody who is socially isolated. So. That's kind of a bit of um, digital disruption because you put some technology in there to deliver it. Um, we're actually doing some work with um, Innovate UK and we've got a number of challenges and there's one that's gone out at the moment. But we're looking, for instance, with children who have special needs. Um, it's very expensive to support children um, in getting to school because often they're supervised on a one-to-one -one basis. We're looking at something like um, an Uber so we'd encourage parents to take other children and to work together. So that's the kind of way that we're trying to get innovation. So um, that's around putting some of those challenges out into the community and uh, innovate helping those, us with that because I think traditionally local authorities are quite traditional. So the gateway is, is the opportunity when we get um, you know, for instance, if we come to this session and um, Jack and I have already said, oh, we like, we like the look of that. So how do we make that happen? So the gateway is the opportunity to look in 
the return on investment, um, how quickly you can go through the procurement process and how you make that a reality. So it's supposed to be something that allows this innovation to take place. So <coughs> data, and this is about one of the big challenges for us as an organisation because local authorities traditionally have a lot of data. What we're not really doing at the moment is um, making the best use of that. So you have operational insight, you'll have um, you know, historic data, and so um, this is one of the areas that we're working to address. We're actually doing a piece of work with Staffordshire University as part of the Innovate UK programme, so rivals there. Um, as Digital Staffordshire is the LEP, so that's the Local Enterprise Partnership and Innovate UK. And what we've been doing there is taking the data from the infrastructure partner we have, which is Amy's. So we've taken all of the road work information and then overlaid that with the utility companies to try and plan the works better. So surprisingly enough, when you start to look at the data of um, road traffic and lots of people have been disrupted on the way here, in Staffordshire there's been quite a lot of uh, regeneration that impacts um, people such as the ambulance service when they're trying to go out, it alters their response times. It affects the police and it affects fire. So there's all sorts of health implications, but it also affects local businesses as well because what happens is um, <clears throat> a lot of factories have things like just-in-time production and so it has an economic cost. So um, what we're looking to do is um, understand better some of that organisational data. And then health. And then Jack is going to go into some of the examples, but this is just the overview. Um, the system's very much designed with the provider, so we've gone into quite a traditional commissioning model in the past without understanding um, what the user needs from the service. It's very much around we're going to commission this service um, and not taking those individuals into account. So the future position would be the user at the heart of the system, managing a more agile workforce, fully joined up ecosystem with health and care, which is Sounds easy when it's written like that, but it's obviously quite a challenge. Um, <clears throat> and it's actually, I think somebody, uh, big data, it's actually use of big data uh, for effective prediction, promoting more self-management and making better choices through more accessible information and support. So that's things like the Staffordshire Cares. So I'll hand over to Jackie now. Jackie Small, I'm um, Head of Public Health and Planning at Staffordshire County Council. I um, basically commission um, prevention services. What I wanted to um, talk about in my next um, slides, really, one of the drivers for us, again, um, Dion highlights, is around efficiency and actually demand management and being much more effective. And also, it's around um, technologies evolving at such a fast rate. Much of the services that we have in place are quite traditional, and they're set up in quite a traditional way, and they don't really reflect the way in which a lot of people live their everyday lives. So. That's one of the kind of real drivers for us to actually change things. And I just use this slide really to illustrate. Um, we know that now more than ever, more people are accessing the internet via smartphones, whole raft of things, and people are using technology to just buy on Amazon, shop, that kind of thing. So we have started looking. So these are illustrations of things that we're doing in, in, in health and care. So we've started looking. So by no means have we actually implemented. We're actually still scoping. So I've got some examples of areas that we're looking at, which is social work, um, health visiting, school nursing, and um, just broadly digital inclusion to the population. So if we're looking at social work, for example, one of the challenges is in a local authority, we have a number of social workers that go out, visit people in their homes for a raft of reasons. Um, they, as Dion said, we're a, we're a rural county, so we're rural, semi-rural, so people are travelling quite far to actually do pieces of work. Wi-Fi is not always brilliant, but you know we're extending the broadband kind of connectivity elements. But one of the things is that they actually are visiting people, taking information, going back to the base somewhere and entering that data back at base. So it's not the most efficient. And also, the other thing is it's not like, um, the other thing, I always give the example of when you're having, I don't know, like British Gas or one of the utility companies come to your house, you kind of have a window period, so you sort of know what time they're going to come. It's not always the case with health visiting if they reroute, uh, sorry, social work if they reroute their journey. So, um, and again, one of the things with workforce planning was thinking through what can we do with technology because, again, 
if somebody goes off sick, they've got a caseload of people to see, how do you swiftly reschedule clients to those people? But also, um, for us, because data is everything, how can we scan at the touch of a button and be able to see um, an individual's caseload, a team caseload, but also actually monitor activity and performance by team, by area, and, and understand some of the activity, but also ensure that data is complete as well. So again, technology sort of gives us an opportunity for that. So one of the things we've started looking at is around um, how can we make, and we also use the term agile in local authority, how can we make them much more adaptable and work differently? So again, it's sort of looking at um, possibly um, issuing um, all social workers with a tablet, but actually looking at using an app that can actually schedule the clients, work out the, the distance from home so they're scheduled in order, um, looking at sort of being able to um, increase, um, I think, productivity of the team, but efficiency so the outcomes for clients are much better. So, for example, if you've got better caseloads, um, the, the thing would be if people are managing clients differently, it's also how do we motivate social workers to work differently, so there's something in it, what's in it for me, so if they've got an app, it's, it's the ability to manage their caseload, but also to manage elements of their day-to-day -day work as well. So things like um, their managing their expenses, doing peer-to-peer -peer kind of um, meetings online, also um, looking at sort of service improvement, service strengths, service weaknesses, so they can actually share, share good practice with each other. So those are some of the ideas around the social work approach. Okay. Yes, yeah, I mean, this is part of the approach. I mean, we're talking broadly around the solutions. But clearly, partnership is going to be a really big, big part of that. And we work collaboratively with a range of organisations and agencies. So that's really, really key. But I think in order to actually change the way in which the workforce works, we're looking at technology around that, but also the engagement with partners to, I think, part of the consultation with patients and with clients to actually just see what works for them, what's best for them. Um, another area which I mentioned earlier was health visiting. And again, it's looking at the model of care because health visiting now is a local authority responsibility, commissioning health visitors. And for people not familiar with health visitors, every um, baby born sort of between naught and five, every child has a health visitor. And there are universal kind of reviews and um, statutory visits that all parents have. So something like four or five visits that people automatically have. And there's also a number of areas where health visitors provide support um, of two families, be it from sort of maternal um, well-being in terms of mental health, breastfeeding, weight management, that kind of thing, and a whole raft of other areas. And one of the things that we've started to look at is that every, basically in Staffordshire we have about 7,000 births a year, so every, every family would automatically get a health visitor. But one, one thing we recognise is that in terms, across the range of people, not everybody will all, always need a face-to-face -face visit. There are, because one of the things is we know that a lot of new parents are using technology. We know how successful things like Mumsnet are and a whole raft of things that people use online. So one of the thinking is that the health is role really, really crucial, but actually how do we use it really effectively? So there's something about how we in, so start looking at how we stratify families according to risk and need. Um, and then actually where there's lower risk, people, because we know from Facebook and other kind of media that people are uploading pictures of their family, um, pictures of friends, connecting with people. So there's an opportunity there to use technology to actually do some of the developmental assessments, but that needs further research and we recognise that. Um, but also one of the things we're looking at and looking at the slides we saw earlier, having a dashboard, if we're getting um, a proactive platform and an interactive way for parents to actually feedback uh, around key common issues of their child, then there's the opportunity for them to, um, for, for where there's data, we can look at that data in the round, but we can actually proactively contact them as well as them actually asking questions. So the, that's, that's an area of work that we're looking at. But we're also looking at um, where, where there's sort of issues where you've got low risk families, how you can refer them on through that system to get help so that there's an assurance system in place so it's not just about putting information about you and your child into a database, it's also about someone proactively looking at that data, contacting you where there are gaps or where there are concerns or where there are issues. Um, and also, one of the things that we thought was where there's higher risk, you can actually um, focus that face-to-face -face resource much more effectively and much more intensively rather than spreading a resource across lots of people. 
is how you use medium in terms of the media for, the, for those people where there's low risk, but actually the face-to-face -face where there's actually much more need and much more support required as well. Um, and similarly, we've started looking at um, school nursing, which in a similar approach, we're thinking um, that we might be able to do some risk ratification. But it would be different because, say, children from 5 to 19 have a school nurse, but it might be that we start looking at where children are at um, secondary school age, what's the opportunity for doing something different, because we know a lot of children and young people are using technology, but there's something about how we stratify according to risk, but also we use technology as a means of engaging with young people and actually interacting with them more to find out some of their key issues and concerns, because I think as well it's discreet, um, and again, in terms of the school nursing um, profession, that's an ability that they, they would be able to have in, in, in the scope of their work. So that's something that we're also looking at. Okay. Can you share data with the police about I mean, I mean, I haven't um, captured that on this. We have got a um, commissioning team that look at substance abuse <laughs> and they commission services. There, there is a challenge around data and sharing data where it's patient and person identifiable data. So that's not something that we've actually thought about in terms of using it for that. You know, there are police work, there is work going on with the police and Dion, you've been involved with some work around yeah. um, data and information systems, but I think from a health perspective, we, it's not on our plan to, yeah. So what we're looking at um, from a data perspective is we currently have a partnership called the Match Centre, which is So broadly, I mean, there's, there's something again, the kind of work that we're thinking of around digital platforms is that it's not um, that it's just information in, it's about a way of interacting and communicating with young people around common issues that they may have, but also in the background doing some risk stratification so that where people have got higher levels of need, that you don't miss out on providing some face-to-face -face support where it's required, because that's still very, very important. But it's just that we understand that people have different needs, and so there'll be some people where technology can actually provide them with the support that they need, but also be able to interact and direct them to the right service and, and get the right assurance for them as well. Um, and again, one of the uh, big areas that we're looking at is around um, just broadly inclusion for older people because one of the things that we see is that um, technology is moving at such a fast rate. Not everyone, um, if they're not in work or if they're not connected to the right networks, they don't get that opportunity to evolve and become part of this digital world. So we are looking at um, ways in which we can actually um, support <coughs> older people and other excluded groups to actually get more included in, into the whole digital revolution really, in terms of um, looking at how they can access um, support through our community libraries, um, and some of our community hubs in terms of some of the things like the digital uh, eagles that Bart is running, but we want to expand that further and we'll be looking at other examples really for that. And again, you know, some of the outcomes are obvious, I think, in terms of digital inclusion. There's something about um, looking at social cohesion, particularly that whole connecting generations of families together as well. And again, we know a lot of people using Skype. Um, the system that you went through earlier gives that example of families just knowing what's happening to their, their, their other family members. Um, the other thing that we want as well is to actually um, partner as well, not just with the voluntary sector, but other commercial organisations where it's possible to do much more training and input for older people. Um, and again, one of the things that we are going to start doing is looking at some of the kind of media support so we can actually signpost people to hubs for support, 
but also showcase people where we've got um, keen, interested older people who are using technology. Just really providing that example to people that it's possible, because I think for some people it's kind of a bit scary, and it's like, what, what happens if I use it? What happens if things go wrong? So it's something about that peer-to-peer -peer learning as well that we'll be looking at. And again, um, one of the things that's very technical is planning for end of life. There's some work that we are starting to do around workplace health and wellbeing. Um, and again, one of the things we want to do is to work closer as a local authority with the NHS in terms of health and care. But also there's something about um, working um, to actually strengthen our links with housing and finance just really so that we can actually deliver, develop some online digital tools because for people to help them in terms of planning for later life because there's a lot of resource out there but actually it's about enabling people to do that themselves um, and again we, that's something that we're looking at in terms of our workplace plan but also again there's some work, further work that I think we're going to do around awareness raising to engage with communities to actually get that kind of profile raised around what people can do for themselves in terms of some of the end of life planning, commercial organisations, workplaces, how they can work with their staff and others to do that as well. And again, just some examples of some of the things that we're doing that Dion um, highlighted earlier. The work that we're doing to make it a reality, digital inclusion for people in Staffordshire, is around the, um, improving connectivity through super fast broadband in terms of some of the roadworks and extending that. And given that we're a rural, semi-rural community, it's not always possible for people to travel to long distances. And you do travel a lot for a lot of things. So actually um, making and enabling people to be much more di digitally aware would actually make quite a difference to a lot of people's lives in some of the rural communities. Um, and again, um, Dion mentioned the health challenges that we're doing through Heineken. And we are looking at um, app development. So one of them was around transport that you mentioned. Um, around um, children with disability. So looking at ways of actually coming up with a scheme for that. But actually, it's not something we're going to develop. It's going to go out to the community for the community to come up with solutions. Um, and, and, you know, and if it's the right solution, that will be adopted and developed and, and tested. Um, and again, we're also working with the Staffordshire University. They've got an innovation lab, um, digital clean at Kiln around data. We're also working with the Centre for Health and Development around um, looking at some behaviour change programme development as well and possibly using digital tools to support behaviour change. We're also doing some work because we've got um, a range of community centres and settings that we are, in terms of the UK, online training and development. So we've got some, some set up, but what we're looking at is ensuring that, for, that they're in the right areas where we know that people need more support in terms of they're digitally excluded, so we're looking at evolving that at the moment. And also, we're going to start promoting um, the Learn My Way digital kind of trainings. And, and again, the Digital Eagles in uh, Barclays, that's in place in some of our libraries as well to support. So broadly, I'm just taking you through a series of the um, services that we're looking to actually enhance and actually improve in terms of what's offered and what's, what people can access. To